Hey everybody, the purpose of this video is to get us some solutions to the uh, this quiz on central tendency. We got some raw data, we got some group data, and we're going to kind of run some numbers to see how the centers uh, pan out. So the first thing we had to do was we had to find the mean, median, and mode of this uh, bunch of data up here. I'm going to use Excel to do this um, just because uh, it's just my go-to tool. Um, and it doesn't matter. I mean, you can do it any way you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and use Excel. Uh, so to find the mean, I just go equals average. This is something you'll do very soon in an assessment if you haven't already done. Okay, so the average of that data is about 6.3, meaning that if we took all that data, uh, all those stop sign runs and spread them evenly over the 30 days, you'd have to run six and a third stop signs per day to have the same number of stop signs. So that's all that is, median equals median of the same group. Let's see what we got here. Median's three, so if we were to put these bad boys in order, three would be in the middle. And is there a mode? There appears to be. It looks like there's at least a couple zeros. Let's see if that has a bunch of zeros, actually. Yep. So you got a mean, median, and mode of six and a third, three, and zero. Let's go ahead and make these all bolded. All right. Uh, next up was we have to fill in this distribution here, fill these frequencies in. Um, and one way to do it, of course, is just to, it's just a count. And I got, I really have no problem um, doing that. There is a command you can use called the frequency command in Excel. I'm going to show you how to use it. You, by all means, don't. Uh, you can simply count. But I'm going to show you this cool command. And if you're ever interested in how it works, I have a uh, document that will actually walk you through what I'm doing right now, if you're interested. Of course, you can also just say, I'm not interested at all. I'd rather just count stuff, and I got no problem with that either. But there's your, there's your fill-in right there. So there's part two. There's 16 between 0 and 4, 7 between 5 and 9, and so forth and so on. Uh, number three, find the weighted mean. Okay, so the first thing I got to do is I got to go and fill these bad boys in. 2, 7, 12, and it should be able to find the pattern now. And there we go. Yeah, so that's our pattern. So to find the weighted mean, I got to do the X times the F column. So we got this times this. Boom. I can drag that formula down. Here's our stop signs run. And to find the weighted mean, I'm actually going to have to do the sum of that column divided by the sum of this column. And that will give us our average to the nearest, well, lots of decimals, but uh, we'll go ahead and shrink those down a little bit, make it a little more logical. Looks like, we, yeah, technically speaking, it should be seven, I guess, but I'll, I'll leave a couple decimals on there if it makes you feel better. <laughs> uh, I don't think I told you what the round to, it doesn't matter anyway. So it looks like we got a slightly larger average uh, with the grouped data, meaning we overestimated a smidge uh, somewhere within this data set uh, when we made the assumptions that they, they fit down in here. Okay, Here I said by what percent larger. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do a little set over here. I'm going to do equals uh, this guy divided by that guy. So I'm dividing the, uh, the area grouped average by the raw data average, and I get 1.13. Now, the 1 means 100. That means that 7.17 is at least 100% of 6.33, which you know. It's 13% larger, though, and it's 13% larger because of the 0.13 and some change over here. That's, and I gave, you a, I gave you a footnote about that, so that's all that is right there. Uh, next up is to find the weighted mean of another distribution. So what we're doing is we're, we're knocking this thing down by, by numbers of classes. So here we had 30, which is the raw data. Now we've got, what, 8 here? Oops. Hi, babe. Uh, and then here we've got 4. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put the middle of 0 and 9, which is 4 and a half, and then 14 and a half. Make sure you get those halves. Um, don't don't uh, don't skimp on the halves because otherwise you end up under or overestimating things if you if you round up or round down. Uh, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Hang on, here we go. Equals this times this. Drag it down. There we go. Okay, so now this average is gonna be equals the sum of that column. And remember, I'm doing this in Excel, but you would you would do all this manually if you if you wanted to uh, just use the, the formulas from class. That comes out being about 8.2, looks like. Yeah, there you go, there you go. And then the last one was by what percent higher is that one than the raw data. So we got equals that 
divided by that it comes out at 1.28 about 29 percent somewhere in that neighborhood so you see what's happening if you over simplify too much if you over um you're over uh, uh estimating too much or you're over i shouldn't say overestimating you're over you're combining the data into two broad categories you're losing more and more of the precision. Obviously, the most precision is going to be uh, raw data, but with every iteration of grouping that you do, you lose more and more. I think I just realized something, friends, that you can't see the mode on this. Let me slide this over. There we go. I should be able to see it now. There's the mode of zero. So anyway, that's uh, hopefully some solutions for you at the quiz, and hope it helped. See you in class.